The Latin kings have existed on the streets of Chicago for more than half a century. The name sparks fear, but also pride. The history of the Latin kings is deeply tied to the history of the Puerto Rican and Mexican community in Chicago. Their poverty and powerlessness and police brutality and misconduct. But if you watch TV or read the newspapers, you'd see only one side of the Latin kings. For example, let's watch this clip from Gangland. Latin kings in Chicago is the most vicious, brutal, law-breaking game ever made. To understand the Latin kings is to understand the anger of Latino youth. But to understand that anger, we have to look back over the history of the Latin king to see more clearly how violence and drugs coexists with the angry cry of youth for justice. That anger begins at the very origins of the Puerto Rican community in Chicago. I grew up in an environment where my dad didn't trust the police and um, so we didn't trust the police growing up either. It was very common for the, uh, for the Caucasian police officers to, to, to ask him the, the, the famous question, why are you hanging around with these pigs? It was like, we seen the police and it was like, it was going to be the worst. I mean, bad news. Seeing the police, it was bad news. In 1963, the Latin Kings were founded at Kedzie in Ohio and soon formed a second chapter at Schiller and Levitt. Why the Latin Kings had formed would become very clear at the first Puerto Rican Day Parade in 1966, when police shot and killed 20-year-old Arcelis Cruz, and the Puerto Rican community, particularly its youth, erupted in rioting and anger at police brutality. There were many gangs in Lincoln Park at the time, the most important of which were the Young Lords. When we came into that community and it became more and more Latino, then, then, then that's when the gang fights began with the, with the other gangs that were already there. Uh, so, you know, before the Young Lords, of course, you, you know, we're, we know that there were other gangs uh, already in Lincoln Park. The Young Lords transformed from a street gang to a revolutionary organization, leading a fight in the Puerto Rican community against police brutality, but also the gentrification that would displace Puerto Ricans from Lincoln Park to Humboldt Park. The Latin Kings were not a revolutionary organization. They were a street gang, torn by conflicts about how best to express the anger of Puerto Rican youth. Let's listen to Rory Guerra, one of the early members of the Latin Kings, explain. As far as the Latin Kings, we were the predominant group in, in the city, in, in the Latino community. We had sections all over the city. We were into organizing, but we didn't have a purpose. The, pur the purpose, the, the reason we organized was to expand territory, to have more say, numbers. And uh, where the Young Lords uh, became very effective with a small amount of numbers and true members and true community people. And the Latin Kings would gradually expand their influence and in the late 60s merged with a Mexican gang on the south side called the Coulter Kings. The Latin Kings eventually would be a citywide organization and now in the 21st century is a global organization uh, with chapters in uh, multiple countries. The 1960s social movements would promote a pro-community uh, identity, a nationalist identity, but that was very short-lived. By the end of the 60s, a war on gangs and a vast increase in the gang intelligence unit of the police department to 170 members. Pushing the Latinos into prison, they confronted a much larger number of black inmates and the Latin Kings quickly organized and became the strongest gang within the Illinois prison system. This would have a variety of effects, 
but mainly it was the strengthening of the internal organization and of a criminal identity. On the streets, the deindustrialization that hit Chicago and the Midwest devastated the Puerto Rican and Mexican communities. The result was uh, reliance on selling drugs as a way to survive. And along with that came violence between gangs fighting over collars and drug market. The Puerto Rican Day Parade, which in the 60s saw battles between Puerto Rican youth and police, now saw warfare between the Latin kings and the Spanish cobras and the maniac Latin disciples. The kings and their allies would kill uh, Albert uh, Hitler Hernandez, the leader of the maniac Latin disciples, and King Cobra Medina, the leader of the cobras. And the blood feud continues to this day. But this was a time of growth for the Latin kings on both the north and the south side. Let's let New York's King Tone give a brief description of what happened in the early part of the 70s. The late 60s to the 70s, Lord Gino, who is recognized by all the kings as the superior, um, united all the little fashions and all the little cliques in Chicago that were Latin kings and made them into one. And that's when the crown became a symbol. And it symbolized one crown, one Latino. On the one hand, Tone is right. There was one crown, one structure. On the other hand, um, as one of the Latin king leaders said to me that the Latin kings aren't an empire with an emperor, but a federation of neighborhood gangs. Still, what Gino and BK, the South Side leader, did in the 70s was begin to put together a literature and a structure. That structure would not be a political one. The Latin kings were leery of the FALN, which at the time was a militant Puerto Rican independence organization that spawned a more conventional breed of politician like Billy Ocasio, Luis Gutierrez, and Jose Lopez. Conventional politics in Humboldt Park would develop very complicated relationships with many of the gangs there. Violence and drugs were part of the day-to-day -day life on the streets, and the identities of Latino youth were those of warrior and gangster, hostile to the racism and oppression of Chicago. The leaders of the Latin kings, including uh, La Corona, Lord Gino, and La Chicano, um, um, uh, Baby or BK, sought to provide structure um, and reintroduced it through the words of the Constitution of the Latin Kings, an earlier identity of expressing solidarity with oppressed people, particularly brown people. The Latin Kings would be soldiers, but soldiers for the hood, soldiers for the nation, and solidarity would coexist with the need to survive all the tension and conflict that exists to this day. King Radar, in his introduction to the Latin King's book on uh, their globalization, expresses this contradiction. And we can see by this, the words here, that the ideas of gangland and the police and the mass media, that the Latin Kings are only one thing, is profoundly mistaken. What's important for the public, police, and the youth of the Latin kings themselves to understand is that kingism represents a way that both recognizes the need for survival and rebellion, but insists on solidarity with other oppressed people. This means that drugs and violence are understandable, but the wrong way to go about solving the problems of the streets. In fact, gangbanging is seen by the Latin kings as only the first stage in a transformation of the king from destructive rebel through maturity, the conservative phase where the king warrior gets married and retires and leaves the streets behind and then into a new identity, the new king stage where an awareness of the global world and the need for liberation of all oppressed people comes to the center. Part of this change in consciousness is of men towards women, and the Latin queens have long been a part of the Latin king and queen nation.
Although in the late 1990s, as an independent entity, the Latin Queens in Chicago ceased to exist. What's important is that the ideals of Kingism remain as a goal and a path for young people within the Latin Kings and Queens, but they coexist with the violent reality of the street. The last decade has seen Latin King leaders across the world indicted for conspiracies to deal drugs and homicide, and the struggle within the Latin Kings over which path to take um, remains very sharp. This conflict is worldwide as well, um, as street gangs across the world struggle to transform into social movements while not being able to leave behind the desperation of the streets. Meanwhile, in Humboldt Park, the gentrification efforts of developers were firmly met with attempts to maintain Humboldt Park as a traditionally Puerto Rican community. The Latin King and Queen Nation's multiple conflicting identities of warrior, gangster, and activist are hardly unique to Puerto Ricans and Mexicans. Nearly a hundred years ago, an Irish gang in Bridgeport combined racist violence with politics that led their longtime leader, Richard J. Daly, to become mayor of Chicago. Gangs, as we can see from Daly's quote about how tough he was, um, are a part of Chicago's history, whether they were Irish, Italian, Black, a Chinese, Mexican, or Puerto Ricans. What's important for this history is for young Latin kings and queens that there's an alternative to gangbanging and drug dealing, the path of the new king. For the public and for law enforcement, it's important for us not to blindly accept the sensationalism and one-sidedness of gangland in the media and realize that the Latin kings, like the Hamburgs, are not just one thing. While the anger of youth is often destructive, within organizations like the Latin Kings, we also can find the seeds for hope and change. All documents uh, in this production were taken from published materials or from freely available material on the internet. This is a production of gangresearch.net. The music on this video was produced and performed by Latin Kings.